Okay, here we are on the PT 658, and a lot of you have asked to uh, have a tour of the engine room. And so we're going to go down into the engine room and show you some of the key features down there in the world's only working PT boat engine room. So I'm going to call down this vertical ladder into the engine room where there are three um, 5M 2500 cubic inches um, marine engines. They're V12s made by Packard. Packard V12s and they burn aviation gasoline. And so we have the port, we have the starboard, so you made by Packard, exhaust hoses, and then we have the center engine with the two exhaust hoses that go off either direction. Down here, just the general layout, you've got on the forward bulkhead, you have the engine control panel with the engine order telegraphs right there, those pointers, and then you have tachometer gauges for the engine speed, and you have manifold pressure gauges, and you have magneto selector switches here, which have three positions. You have intake, exhaust, and both. Uh, for each one of the three engines. You also have oil temperature, oil pressure, and water temperature gauges here. All these are aircraft style gauges. There's also a seven day boat clock right there. You can see that. And over here on this half is the tank level indicator. And so what you do is you uh, you have to you have the two forward 800 gallon tanks and the two aft 800 gallon tanks. What you do is you have a little, it, it causes bubbles in the tank and you can see how much gas you have by where the needle goes. It's, it's just a rough indicator. The, the most accurate way is to stick, put a stick down in there, a, a graduated stick. <laughs> um, so right here you can see the exhaust, uh, I'm sorry, the um, fresh water expansion tank and the it's a dry sump design and so it has a external lube oil sump tank which is over there in the corner it's got about 20 gallons of oil in there and so it's a got a scavenging oil pump on the bottom and most of the oil is kept in that tank anyway um, these engines are uh, 1850 horsepower m m mainly due to the carburetor, the supercharger, and the intercooler. So here's the carburetor right here. It's a Holley 1685F. Um, you can see where the gas comes in right here on the side. And uh, it's a pretty large amount of gas. It uses 66 gallons an hour when it's at cruising speed. And then at top speed it burns 200 gallons an hour. Well, no, it's closer to 170 gallons an hour, so 500 gallons an hour for all three engines at top speed. Anyway, so you can see the supercharger wheel, it's, it's inside this uh, spiral type housing, and then it sends the, uh, it spins at 3,000 or 7,000 RPM when the engine crankshaft is going 1,000, so it's gear driven. Then you have a intercooler and the intake manifold down the middle and then you have the exhaust manifolds here and they're water cooled and uh, so they uh, they stay nice and so they don't melt. Over here you've got the D DC switchboard and uh, you have the battery breakers right there there's a battery box in each corner and then uh, you have the various loads and 24 volt DC up there and then you have uh, ignition power and the lights 24 volt lights and uh, down here there's another one of those ex uh, oil sump tanks over here we have a what's it called a uh, auxiliary generator it's a capital using a Waukesha engine and the control panel it uses a uh, old carbon uh, uh, car carbon washers uh, type voltage, voltage regulator. Anyway, so uh, this thing actually runs, although our 200 amp DC generator doesn't work because <laughs> we don't have a voltage regulator that works. The, uh, 
Um, the generator actually does work though, if we could just control it. Anyway, there's a workbench down here and a secret door to the uh, aft part of the boat that's not on the original drawings. And the aft bulkhead, we just replaced this bulkhead with new wood and so we're going to restore the voltage regulator that goes to the engine. Each one of these engines has a, a starter and a generator on it. So you can see the starter is the big one on the left. The generator is the smaller one on the right. It's a, it's a 40 amp, 24 volt DC generator. And it has, it's a carbon pile is what it's called. Carbon pile voltage regulator right there. And uh, um, I think that one works, but the other one doesn't work because they're old. Um, anyway, so uh, something significant about these exhaust pipes is they got really hot and they were originally um, copper tubes that were inside of a rubber hose with water flowing between. We didn't have that and so we put uh, uh, just some accordion hose that was wrapped up with uh, fiberglass insulation and so it melted the fiberglass it got so hot there's literally flames coming out of the back of the exhaust manifolds so anyway we uh, finally uh, got people and um, a couple of companies that donated their time and money to have stainless steel pipes that are bent and then we put them inside of a rubber hose and there's a, a spirally tack welded quarter inch uh, piece of tubing that goes all the way around and it guides the water in a spiral so the outside of this thing only gets like 90 degrees when this thing is running instead of 1800 degrees <laughs> which is what it was before uh, anyway so you can see down here we've got the uh, original ventilation fans there's the supply ventilation right there for up forward oh no that's the exhaust and it just exhausts into the engine room and then over here you have the supply ventilation which is another fan and there's the control for it right there um, you also have the um, uh, the bookshelf where they keep the engine manuals and we also have a sign in the engine room that says uh, it's pretty appropriate it's so loud down here when these things are running you can't even like I can yell in your ear and you can't hear so we have this quiet please sign down here um, so right here this is the control box for the other auxiliary generator that we're missing and so it's supposed to be right there where that black toolbox is but uh, eventually if we can find another auxiliary generator we'll put it right there and uh, then we'll have everything we need um, something inside these battery these battery boxes are basically just uh, series and parallel connected uh, 12 volt batteries and so we have 24 volts that goes to our starters one interesting feature on this DC switchboard is these are the starting solenoids so up there on the engine control panel you have a push button that you start here I'll show you and uh, when you start the engine you have to line up power then you raise this this little plate up and press the button and it starts it makes the engine starter go and when you have enough oil pressure you take this to both and then the engine starts cranking as long as you have fuel so anyway these solenoids when you press that little push button you come over here and you can encase the wire that connects that push button to this solenoid uh, gets shot or something and breaks you can just push it and you'll start the starter that way it's an electromagnet zone is kind of cool though you know how that the Navy has everything uh, with a backup and so this is the backup method to start the engines so let me see uh, that's pretty much it um, hope you learned something and uh, I'll try to take a movie the next time we get underway All right uh, so this is uh, Jerry signing off on the only operating engine room in a real PT boat from World War II, uh, PT-658.